Hey guys, I'm Matthew here. In this video, I just want to talk to you about another kind of uh, like geometry, like block instancing, which is kind of not really, but kind of can be considered geometry at some point, um, called uh, a hatch. Now, a hatch is used uh, a lot in architectural drawing, which we'll get to later, and I'm and Ollie will talk to you about that a lot in the lecture series. So, if I type a uh, curve, for example, and draw a curve, I can also write a command called hatch, and it will ask me to select curves. I can press enter, and I have all these hatches here. Now, I can choose to uh, put squares in it, there we go, let me move. There's some squares. I can choose to put pluses. I'm not sure what this bug here with the squares is, but I can't really solve that. So there we go. There's some X's. I can do a diagrid. I can do more squares. I can do some lines. I can make it solidly colored. Um, it's all fairly self-explanatory. So, you know, if I wanted to make the pattern bigger, I can just times the pattern by two, and it'll increase the spacing. Uh, five, make it even bigger. Ten, make it bigger. Hundred, you know, make it even bigger, right? So by default, it's set to one. You can also rotate it by 45 degrees, or 30 degrees, or one degree, or zero degrees. So I can rotate hatches, and I can scale them here. So everything I want to do about hatches is just set right here. So if I press uh, OK, I can click, and this hatch is in the file. So it says one hatch added to selection. And the hatch has properties. So in its properties, I can change what it is. So I can change it to solid if I don't really want it to be there. And then after the fact, I can change it to say this liney one, hatch three. Isn't that sweet? Doesn't really work at that scale, so I might want to make it you know 10 times bigger. There we go. So now I've got lines in my um, in my curve. So that's effectively a hatch. Now I can explode a hatch and it'll explode it into its constituent lines which will make it a lot more difficult to work with. So hatches are useful to keep in their state. Um, if I have another curve, for example, and I want to hatch that and I'll, I'll just give it whatever and I want this to be this, I can actually just click on match and then it'll give me the option to select another hatch I'll select this one, and it will take its settings and pass it into that. So if I, say, rotated this by 45 degrees, and then said match again, it would rotate it by 45 degrees for me. Really, really easy. So that's the hatch. Now if I have a curve, and I turn points on, and one of the points is not in line with the, the others, then if I type hatch, it'll give it a go. So I'm going to put solid on, but you'll notice that it just projects it directly down. It doesn't, you know, fill the, the curve with uh, whatever the hatch I want is. So it kind of projects everything to the, um, to the, the, the C plane level and doesn't really care about if the curve's up or down or sideways. So that's the hatch tool. Now, one important thing you need to uh, look at is under tools, uh, in options, in annotation, there's this hatch section, and you can import hatches. Now, I don't have any on this machine, but we've set up a, a file, um, and the, in public there will be a few hatch patterns that you can import that are useful for architectural drafting. So that's all you need to know about hatch. Select a curve, hatch it. You can choose a pattern, you can scale it, you can rotate it, and you can apply hatches to different um, areas after you've done it by using the match section in properties. And that's uh, that. So I'll see you in the next video when we'll talk about uh, meshes. See you there.